Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be presenting a pretty amazing arc melee build that you can use in endgame and do quite a lot of damage within a few seconds as long as you stay amplified. Using Thunderclap and Point Contact Cannon Brace, the pair allows us to destroy minor to ultra enemies within a single half or full charge hit on impact and the damage is nothing to frown upon. My version focuses on making this GM viable, so you can use this with a number of other things free, without the need of certain perks or exotics. With this alone, you have fast ability regen for both your melee and grenades respectfully, without too much mods required. Great AoE effect for ad clearing via Jolt, and it's very simple to use, so that everyone that has was shown can do this in seconds. So, let's go over the following. To start with aspects, you're going to want to have Touch of Thunder, which allows our pulse grenades to create ion traces periodically and also get stronger the longer it is out. Then you want Knockout, where critically wounding a target will increase your melee damage and start regaining your health. The following are a must for the build, as it allow you to not only make pulse grenades give constant ion traces, which will be needed, but will also get health regen and melee damage increase via Knockout effect. This is the most barebone part of the build that everyone should be fine with. For the fragments, Spark of Ions, defeat and destroy targets create ion traces. Spark of Recharge, where while quickly wounded, your melee and grenade energy recharge faster. Spark of Discharge, where arc weapon finder blows have a chance to create ion traces. And Spark of Resistance, where while being surrounded, it will grant you 25% damage reduction. As the build requires some level of risk to play, Having this sparkle recharge fragment will massively help with getting your abilities back fast through risky playstyle. I would say this and sparkle resistance are the two fragments I can see the most being constantly used by players with how the setup will play out. Of course, spark of ions and discharge will help with bolstering ability energy as we play, but the first two are a must for the build through and through. For the mods and stats, both discipline and strength will play a part within the build itself and so will resilience, but not to a very high degree. For example, at tier 6, we'll be getting a 17% damage reduction while also having the spark of resistance fragments once active as well. All this will be enough to survive a GM level sniper hit on full health, which is a bonus for not needing to add resistant chest mods. This also gives us a 30 second cooldown when using our thruster class ability, since the build will be mobile and we'll need to react fast for ability regen. Although it's at 30 seconds, I can reduce this down more when using the distribution mod and with the two combined will provide a very decent one with combo. Our discipline is at tier 7 and at this level we'll be getting a 1 minute 26 second cooldown using our pulse grenades. Although a high cooldown rate, we do have ion traces, spark of recharge and distribution in play which will help to alleviate the problem. I do also have the impact induction mod which will give us a 20% grenade energy back for midi hits and considering how often we'll be using our midi, this will in fact be the key area to support or regen without the need of perks to further help. The strength now will be at tier 10 with a 46 second midi cooldown. This along with midi kickstart and elemental charge will allow us to use this effect over and over again without the need of Monte Carlo or Puglis for example. Just to give you an idea, with charged up, we will have 4 charges overall, and having such charges will allow us to get between a 12.9% to 31% energy mini regen back. Our build can create up to about 4 to 7 hour traces upon a grenade and weapon use, and this here will give us armor charges back each time. Using this cycle will grant us mini energy back with how often we get armor traces going, thus, we can shorten our cooldown rate based on our mods and our traces overall. This is the same rule I used for the grenade build I did previously, but once you add the point cannon midi regen as well from kills, you will see just how easy it is to pick up and use how you like. In this section, we'll be covering armor charges and additional mods. Charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges as we play and collect. Next, adding the Hamak Cypher mod will help with creating orbs and power via our main primary. Afterwards, you can then add an Arc Surge mod for a 10% Arc Weapon buff once active, and then adding the Time Dilation mod is a must for Armor Charge duration to be extended. Lastly, having Heavy and Refiner mod and two Reserves mod will help with the Selected Heavy we are using. For weapons, we are using Trinity Goom for his amazing Jolting effect. Although Monte Carlo would be better suited for the build, 
I do not intend to revolve the entirety of the build just around the MIDI alone, as using the MIDI in Grandmasters and most endgame content isn't always the safest option. Trinity on the other hand provides me with not only great AoE damage via its jolt effect, but I can also use this from start to finish against pretty much everything I face. It also comes with the effect of allowing me to become amplified faster thanks to the exotic trait. So this combined with my melee allows me to have a stronger damage amplifier on demand when I decide it's the best time to use your charged melee. And then for heavy, we are running the Swarm Adept with Dynamic Sway Reduction and Vorpal. It's suitable for majors, ultras, mini bosses and bosses overall. The weapon can be easily used to cover multiple angles and situations to where you can't use your other weapons. Now I would avoid using a arc rocket launcher here because of the potential chance of using this while in close quarters. But this is of course down to you and you can increase your overall damage against mini bosses and bosses overall if you do use a rocket launcher. Now for those that can't get the adept, then the standard one is also fine to get and easily farmable. So overall, the point contact cannon break exotic has generally made using Thunderclap a different midi beast of its own accord. And I have to give it to Bungie here, this thing does clap back. A midi playstyle in most endgame content is risky to use unless you have a good understanding as to when and where to use it. Most of all, having a way to heal is the biggest key part of making most mini builds function in endgame environments. My build however only has one way of healing constantly, and that's through the knockout aspect that works perfectly with the playstyle of the build. Our main primary, Trinity Ghoul, will be used to bolster our mini damage by once we get amplified, and this damage buff here will allow our mini hits to go crazy hard on a number of enemies. This is most noticeable when being used against a GM Major, who are both hard hitting and tanky to take down through normal means. A fully amplified hit from us will one shot them and everyone else nearby, and this will also grant us additional melee energy regen depending on their tier type. Although having Monte Carlo would be suitable, I don't want this build to be too reliant on just the melee alone because of how vulnerable you are while you're charging your attack. The following build allows you to make full use of your kit via jolting, fast speedy regen, tanky defenses, and flexibility within the mod section. All of these allow me to run this setup in practically all content I want while still hitting hard. Monty is nice to have if you tend to use it for more range based melees instead, while the following requires users to be in good distance to pull this off. On top of that, the melee regen aspect of the build is finely tuned so you'll never be without melee energy on hand which is handy, no pun, for those moments you do mess up. Remember, Ionic Traces, mini kickstart, and Elemental Charge will help with giving you that nudge towards a full charge after a single use. The simplicity and power of the build allows players to easily deal with much tougher enemies in endgame with a single or multitude of hits via a fully charged or out of the box charged hit, which for Grandmasters is not always a safe option to pull. Because of its wider scale of Jordan effects, this build is perfect for anything battlegrounds based, where you can see your full effect go to town on grouped up enemy and respawning enemies. Although the melee does pose a risk to the user, using the melee when enemies spawn in or not focusing on you will be the best way forward to achieve maximum fun with the set. Now, if you know how to use Thunderclap in GMs and know where and when to use it, this will honestly become my favourite to those who enjoy a build risk to their playstyle. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub right here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.